by not negotiating their job at the beginning of their career, women are leaving an estimated between one and $1.5 million on the table of lifetime earnings lost. Today's video is sponsored by Rora. All of their information will be linked down below. Hello everyone and happy International Women's Day. In case you didn't know, it's Tuesday, March 8th, which is International Women's Day. And I can't think of a better topic for today's video than adding some much needed transparency to the void that is post PhD salary expectations particularly for sort of STEM or computer science PhD graduates since that's my research area and in particular how the sponsor of today's video Rora can help you negotiate that salary up by tens possibly even hundreds of thousands of dollars. I could not imagine a better sponsor for today's video than Rora who were named one of Forbes 2021 social impact companies for their work fighting the gendered and racial pay gap. I am so excited for today's video to talk about this. I think the topic of today's video is really, really super important. And if you all could help me out by trying to get this message to as many people as possible by giving this video a thumbs up or commenting or sharing this video, I would really, really appreciate it because I think it is such an important topic. A lot of what I will be discussing is pretty relevant for any job hunt in any field but I will especially be sort of talking about PhD graduates, especially computer science PhD graduates, since that is my area and I just know more about it. First of all, let's just have a quick look at, you know, what the difference would be if this was a industry job compared to an academic job. So looking at academia, in Ireland at least, a lot of universities, especially the schools that are related to science will be funded by some sort of research body. And these research bodies, such as Science Foundation Ireland, will have certain requirements that the school has to uphold in terms of equality, diversity and inclusion. That means that there is a lot more transparency coming about around the sort of hiring process, the promotion process and the salary expectations for different roles. Having those clear guidelines and transparency in the hiring and promotion and salaries is something that really helps ensure equality and helps to close that gendered pay gap. I personally know from receiving emails in my university, which is one of the things that they've done to add that transparency, they always share with all of the current staff any jobs that are coming up. So postdoc positions, any other positions, lecturing, everything like that with the salary band for what is expected. So I know that I can expect somewhere between 38,000 and 45,000 euro per year if I was to go into a postdoc. And I'm not sure what the sort of range within that is about, like what actually constitutes that. So not sure, but I know that at least it'll be around there. So salary expectations for a career in industry then are a lot less transparent. And to be, completely honest, I was very naive and sort of sheltered to all of this knowledge before collaborating with Rora for this video. Um, so I just want to come out and say that pretty much everything I learned for this video, I learned from webinars and then also talking with the actual founder of the company, Brian. They have just fully educated me over at Rora on the value, my value, I suppose, as a future computer science PhD graduate. I do get a lot of questions in comments and DMs and things with things like, is doing a PhD worth it? Or I want to get a certain job, do I need to do a PhD? Will I earn more money if I do a PhD? And of course, I think with a lot of things, it really will depend. And I think the same way that whether you can get a job in that area depends, also the salary itself will be very dependent on a number of factors. So firstly, it will depend on the company and there are a lot of sites that exist, such as Glassdoor, where it's possible to look up different companies and see what they have paid in the past for different roles. So people will go ahead and upload their salaries for different job titles at these companies. And usually you'll get some sort of like averaged information about what you can typically expect in terms of the range for that company. However, 
a lot of the time these bands will stay the same for a long time and they won't typically shift even though the market, which is really what should be defining the salaries, is changing a lot rapidly, especially in fields like computer science. So a lot of the times these salary ranges, especially ones that a company might give you, aren't necessarily reflecting the current market, so the current hiring pool, I guess, the current hiring situation and what's going on. So naturally, a little segue there is the second thing it depends on is the market. So the market is constantly changing in terms of what people are being paid in different positions. And especially if we think about a rapidly progressing field like machine learning, AI, what somebody in a starting position was paid even five years ago is around, could be around $100,000 different than it is today. For example, Rora have clued me in that in Google in particular, the STEM PhD graduate starting salary has changed by over $75,000 in just three years, which is about $25,000 a year, which is crazy. So it's important that we don't just necessarily take what's on these types of sites or what a company tells us as face value for what is going on in the hiring market right now. I'll discuss Rora a little bit more in a second, but they have real-time information about what's going on in the hiring process because they work with clients on a regular basis so they know what companies are hiring, what companies are negotiating and what those salaries in different companies are being offered. So it's a lot more, I suppose, reliable to be looking at what Rora has been doing with their clients than necessarily looking at what is more so historical information that reflects more so the past hiring and not the current hiring process and salaries. Lastly, it will depend on you. And I know you're sitting there thinking, well, obviously it depends on, you know, how well I did in my PhD, my publication record, my uh, work experience, my grades, all of that stuff. But there's a much more important way that it depends on you, a much, much more impactful way that it depends on you. Your ability to negotiate your starting salary will not only affect the initial salary you're being paid, but also your lifetime potential earnings with that company. Let me just say that again, in case you didn't quite catch me. Your ability to negotiate your salary not only affects your initial salary with that company, but also your lifetime potential earnings with that company. I have a couple of friends in the job hunt at the moment, and I know how stressful it can be I know how stressful I think companies sometimes purposefully make it. People on like seven, eight interviews for the same company having to do these like grueling coding interviews that are really stressful, waiting weeks to hear in between these interviews. I think a lot of that, personally I think this, is created by the companies and recruiters to add that sense of uncertainty and make you feel like by the time you get an offer, that you are lucky to even get an offer and that you know you should just go ahead and take that and not worry. And a lot of the time they'll give you these really tight windows to get back to them and you're not given much time to think about it, which means you are more likely to accept a lower offer. Especially when it's a company you really want to work for and especially when you've been doing a PhD or just working a minimum wage job for the last few years. Anything above that sounds pretty good. But, it is so, so, so important that you properly negotiate your salary at the beginning because there really isn't room to improve it by that much once you're with the company. So a lot of people think, okay, I'll start, I'll take this initial salary, I'll see how it goes, I'll try and up my salary in the future. It's okay, I'll be able to do that once I've proven myself to this company. But that's really not possible because a lot of the time, once you've accepted a salary, there is sort of a capped amount that you can increase your salary each year or whatever the period is that a company uses. And same thing goes for bonuses. So there might be like 10% of your salary maximum increase every year. So if you think there's, if you think about somebody who has managed to negotiate a salary that is 20,000 higher than you for the same job and the same experience, which is I think just so unfair, but anyways, that's beside the point. 
let's say this person has negotiated a salary $20,000 or euros or whatever more than you. If you're getting a salary increase of 10% every year and you're thinking, great, I'll be catching up in no time, that same person is also getting that and they're getting that on that 20% as well. So every year that will go up and after five years, that person will be earning more than 32,000 more than you for the same work. That is one of the biggest contributors to the gendered and racial pay gap especially when you consider the fact that a lot of the time you have to ask for these increases as well. So you're in a, in a way like you need to be able to negotiate in the beginning and as you go along. A lot of the time it's the underrepresented groups. So women in certain fields and certain um, levels within companies, minority ethnicities, LGBTQ plus people, people who are underrepresented in these jobs will naturally not be as good at negotiating their salaries compared to white cis males especially in areas that are dominated by these people such as technology this is the most important time in the beginning to negotiate your salary because that's when you have the most power to control what your long-term earnings with that company will be Linda Babcock, who's head of the Decision Sciences Department at Carnegie Mellon, has done a study and found that by not negotiating their job at the beginning of their career, women are leaving an estimated between one and $1.5 million on the table of lifetime earnings lost. We could all be millionaires, apparently, if we just learn to negotiate our salaries better in the initial period of the job hunt. Negotiating is probably one of the things in life that I'm worst at. Um, I'm terrible at it. I am a chronic people pleaser and I don't want people to think badly of me. And I always feel very nervous asking for something that I want or need. And that's something that I'm working on myself this year in 2022. But it's disproportionately felt, I think, by minority groups. This is where Rora comes in. Rora is a company that helps STEM PhD graduates negotiate their starting salaries. They teach you the skills to negotiate as an expert and they'll prepare you for all of the sort of sneaky tactics that a lot of recruiters will use to try and lower your offer. From working with clients on a regular basis, they have a real-time understanding of the market, the bonuses that are being offered, the negotiations that happen with different companies, and when you work with Rora, you'll have access to a career advisor who will be with you the whole time to understand your individual needs and background. You can sign up for a free consultation with Rora and then there will be a sort of initial retainer for the services that they provide. And then what they charge is 20% of the difference between your initial starting salary that was offered and the final offer that you accept. And given that they'll teach you all of the things you need to know for negotiating, we should hope that this will be a huge difference. And in total, Rora has negotiated over $280 million of salaries, which is insane. Rora also gives back by volunteering about 20% of their time to work for free with clients that are seriously underrepresented people in their individual professions. I will have all of the information for Aurora linked down below. But to be honest, I think before talking to Brian, I was very much leaning heavily towards academia because I just did not want to be involved in an industry where there is so much uncertainty around the hiring process and the salary expectations. And I just don't like the idea that people can be paid vastly different amounts for the same job. It just doesn't sit right with me. But I do feel like learning this information from Brian has sort of helped to add some comfort to me around this. And I think just understanding more about the hiring process and negotiations, I think, has really helped. In particular, one thing that I wanted to mention is the five myths of recruitment and negotiation, which I found mind-blowing. And I'll have a more detailed article about it linked down below. So myth one is that your market value is a fixed number. And as I've already sort of touched on before, the market is constantly changing, especially in fields that are constantly changing. And it's, it's important not just to look at what you see on sites like Glassdoor or what a recruiter or a company is telling you, but to be, actually be aware of what's going on in the market right now, which is why it's great to work with Rora who have that real-time understanding of what's going on. The second myth is that you can't go above 
the range a company has offered you. So if they've told you it's between X and Y, that you can't go above that. But a lot of the time, as I've mentioned, these salary bands are not necessarily reflecting the actual market value. And so it's important that you know what that is and that you can argue well about why you actually should be on more than what they've offered in that salary range. And it will be difficult, but I think your future coworkers will be very thankful that you've done this because it means that they will also be able to benefit from that now higher salary band that is offered. The third myth is that you need a counter offer in order to challenge a company's offer. And I think having a counter offer is really helpful, but not necessary not essential at least to the process. And I think if anything, it's good to try and keep this information to yourself because a lot of the times companies will sort of use this to pressure you if they know that you don't have an offer. There has also been a really big scandal before where a lot of big companies were sharing information about which candidates they were hiring. So they sort of blacklisted them from other companies in a way. And they all sort of agreed not to compete for the same people so that people wouldn't have counter offers going into negotiations. So that's great. The fourth myth is that negotiating your salary means that you are not passionate about your work, which I think is really unfair. And if you're a PhD student, you get it because whenever I talk about salaries, there's always somebody in the comments who says something like, you're lucky to even be paid for your PhD. And yeah, sure, like I, I understand that. But I think it's also, if everybody had that opinion, we would all be working for free and nobody would have any money and you wouldn't be able to afford a phone to comment that down below, you know? So I think it's it's possible to be passionate about something and also be paid well for it, especially when you're doing highly skilled work that you've been training for nine, 10 years to do. I think it's only fair that you get paid well to do that work. And especially if you want to remain passionate about whatever it is you're doing, I think that will be very important. The last myth is that you can't ask for help with negotiations. And I think because I've sort of talked to people about this a little bit recently, I think a lot of people feel like it would be very extra over the top to work with a negotiation specialist, especially at this early stage of your career. A lot of people have said to me that they would feel like they could do it maybe at a higher level, but for an initial job that they feel like it's a bit much to be doing that. But as we know now, getting in early with your initial career choices, it could be a total of a million dollars potentially that we're losing out by not doing this now. I do understand like a lot of people are afraid to ask for help, but you have to understand that all of these companies are working with specialists. These recruiters are trained by specialists to lower your offer and you need somebody on your side to help to up that. Same way you have your PhD supervisor to help you out with anything that they're an expert on, the people at Rora are experts on negotiation and that's what you really need in this because you're not expected to be one, but they can help you become a much better negotiator. If you got to this point in the video, comment like that gender sign down below. I can't even think of what it is, but use that emoji down below if you got this far. To be honest, I still think that the corporate world is sketchy AF. Um, I don't like the fact that we have to negotiate salaries in order to be paid fairly. I don't feel like it's fair that the gendered and racial pay gap is in the hands of the people who are being affected by it and the same people who naturally are going to be more stressed and feeling uncertain in the hiring process, applying for jobs in fields where they know there's no proven track record of success for people who look like them. I just don't think that's right. I think companies need to be doing more to ensure that there are clear guidelines for why people are paid certain amounts that is based on merit and not just their ability to ask for more money. Yeah, that made me mad. That makes me mad. It makes me really mad. You know, that's not the world we're living in right now. I'm thankful for companies like Rora who are doing things to help solve this. If I ever do venture into the corporate world, I'll absolutely be making sure to make use of Rora's services. But if they ever just open up general negotiation skills classes and stuff, I think I'd do that as well, just for helping with my actual life. As you know, I'm all about sort of financial transparency. And if you like this type of content, do be sure to let me know with thumbs up, comments and all of that and sharing this so that we get this message out there as much as possible. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thanks to all of my wonderful members. Thank you to Rora for sponsoring today's video and happy International Women's Day, everybody. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you.